My fellow American friends uh, and subscribers, they have to understand that uh, usually history is written by the winner, but in this situation between the uh, US and Vietnam, I think everybody wrote a different story and uh, in Europe maybe, maybe we have the truth, because the truth <laughs> It's always in the middle ground. No? No, no, thank you, they are fine. I do believe that in most history books in the US, at least in the past, was written that you have win, uh, that you have won the war. And uh, I do believe that the same thing happened here. I need to bust them out. And, uh, and uh, please, even if most of my subscribers are from US, please do not unsubscribe. I do believe that the US has lost this war. You can check it online. Check it before killing me in the comments, please. And uh, I do also believe that somehow also, Vietnam has lost this war. And uh, Vietnam, well, they got it back, the, their land, but they lost lots of people. And the same happened to US. Let me cross again. Oh, that's a pretty fine crossroad. So, because I am here, it is a must to go check what the Vietnamese people thought about this situation. They got the freedom from you, dear American friends. But what did they write about that? I'm pretty sure that they wrote that they have won this war. But both of these countries, they were in US trouble. <laughs> US trouble. <laughs> I said US because I was reading US Army on that tank. <laughs> they were in trouble. You know. How do I get inside this museum? I'm getting a bit confused. Well, anyway, what matters is that uh, now both of these nations, they are in peace. Peace is what matters the most to me. I want to travel safely everywhere. <laughs> and I want to be happy sharing uh, time with both Americans and Vietnamese. Let's see. Maybe this one is the entrance. Yeah, seems so. Last admission 5.30 p.m. It's super early in the morning. And the price is just 40,000. Less than a coconut. That's amazing. Okay, so let's change some money. Hello. One. Yes, thank you. Oops. Thank you very much. Here? Okay. Thank you. We need to put a stamp on the art. A peace stamp, probably. And here we got the ticket. 40,000. I wonder what do you want to see first, inside or outside? Let's go outside first because there are these nice tanks and there is also a huge helicopter over there. Okay, I mean, these boats, imagine how scary it is to get approached by one of these. No climbing, of course. <laughs> Come on. I mean, uh, I know some nations where they will climb this. The army is ready. Oh, are you ready? No. I think they closed it because people put stuff inside. Oh my gosh! Wow. I should have come here with a thin K. Thin K probably is able to explain how they work these things. I'm not sure if he wants to remember all of that, but 
Look at this. That's so huge, guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Range. 14,600 meters. It's like 10 miles. That's crazy. That's crazy when you can shoot from 10 miles. And here we get another tank. Another no climbing sign. Light tank. <laughs> Pretty light. Oh my gosh, able to cross rice fields, and that's amazing, that's a real bulldozer. Imagine how much stuff you can smash with it. <laughs> and here we have another type of tank, M41, range for 4,000 miles, I mean, for miles. And that's the helicopter, that's, I love it. Cut here for emergency rescue. Wow. Can you imagine? Even in the past they were thinking about emergency rescue. It's not a, a new thing as I thought. And on the back, here you could open for sure to let the soldiers out. And oh, stop. That's cool. It's pretty cool. Army. I'm getting some Spanish guys behind. Hello. And uh, here we get where they were sitting, all the pilots. Oh my gosh. Imagine every morning, wake up to clean these windows. <laughs> that now are super, super scratched. Anyway, on this side we get the Air Force. But probably we should get inside because it's starting to rain. There is an helicopter, a small one over there. This Air Force, that they had these missiles here on both sides, and they are protecting me from the rain right now. This one is pretty cool. That's to shoot other airplanes. And I do not know if this is to bomb, and this is to shoot other airplanes. Who knows? Jet Fighter F-5A. Uh, five bombs, a jet rex, two wingtips, missile launchers. Okay, whatever it means. And uh, to enter, we have this nice freeze. And uh, war remnants museum. By the way, because it's a war museum, this video I'm not sure if it's gonna make money. I am at uh, 925 subscribers, so I do not make money anyway. But who knows? What do we have here inside? Apart photos and this blue light and the Italian guns. Well, it is just photos. I didn't know that the Pentax brand is so old, totally unexpected. Honeywell is the type of that Pentax and it was used to shoot all these peaks. Oh, that's a pretty cool shoot. Shot. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if we find something very, very cool. A break. American guys. No. Imagine what is, what it could have been to be a photographer during that time. It was crazy probably. Stop the bombing. Children are not for burning. I love such old posters. These were probably all the books written about this war. And uh, of course you can buy them here. They cost uh, 10 times the ticket of the museum. <laughs> Let's go up. Where do I go first? <laughs> Paintings. Oh, but the AC is too cold over here. Oh gosh. We have more photos.
case. I'm uh, almost shaking. Uh, that's why we shouldn't use chemical weapons. That's crazy. This thing called the uh, Agent Toro. Look at my skin, guys. That's crazy. Normally it's flat. And, uh, we shouldn't use chemical weapons. Normal people get caught by this stuff. Not the warriors, not the army, normal people. That's crazy. It's super sad and... Oh my gosh. Now my skin looks like a chicken. <laughs> I cannot believe that. I'm shocked. <laughs> Sorry. Let's get inside in room number six. Always too much AC. Anyway, here we have lots and lots of bullets of various, various types. And uh, on that wall over there, lots of weapons. Let's see. Which one would you use? None? Some of them? have been terrified. The only thing that seems fun to use, but not during war times, is a bazooka. I do not know, but uh, we humans love to destroy stuff. For fun. <laughs> and on the other side we have what? Thank you. I'm not really an expert on such stuff. Rain bomb, you get all these uh, when they explode. Okay. I mean, this room. Uh, much easier to watch compared to the other one. We can breathe normally. That's the thing I don't like about words. The civilians, they shouldn't be touched. That's probably what you do not get uh, in the history books in the US. I really do hope that uh, with this vlog I'm not losing my fellow US friends and subscribers. But uh, history should be told from both sides and then uh, you have to find your truth. Probably the truth is in the middle as I was telling before. And, uh, just there shouldn't be any war. That's so simple. I know there are some situations that need to be solved around the world, but war uh, is never the, the first solution we should, we should search for. trying to say is that uh, war doesn't seem like to ever be the best solution just to be the easiest solution but of course if you're going against Hitler well it is necessary check this out 
imagine what it's like to get hit on an airplane. You're the pilot. You are like on a roller coaster before dying. So I'm leaving this museum a bit depressed, but uh, history shall not be forgotten. That's so important and uh, whatever feelings it gives you, they are the right feelings to go on and uh, have a better life in the future for yourself uh, and uh, for your nation. Anyway, see you tomorrow for better vlogs. <laughs> and I mean uh, funnier. Funnier vlogs, lighter vlogs, whatever you prefer, <laughs> you will find it in this channel. And uh, thank you for watching. Keep reading and believe in your dreams. Uh, ciao. Nice camera. Hello. I love your camera. You have no idea. <laughs>